Greetings, everyone. This is Live Life Well TV host Robert Landau. We are here for a very, very important reason. We are here to present another episode in one of our new shows here on Live Life Well TV that we call Top 10, which means to say that each and every week and for the 14 weeks preceding this episode, because this is Top 10, Episode 15, we will take a look at uh, a different Top 10 list every week. The subject of this episode's Top 10 list is probably one of your favorites. And not only that, it's probably the favorite of most people in the world today. We are going to be covering the top 10 facts you didn't know about coffee. So before things start to percolate, we'll be right back. All right, before we get things going, we have two websites to acknowledge for this episode. One is mentalfloss.com. The other is adjibu.com. So here we go. And actually, before we do go, I have a confession to make. It's very difficult for me to share this with you. But nevertheless, well, with your kindness, with your compassion, and with your never-ending support, I will say to you, I don't drink coffee. Shh. Don't tell anyone. I'm probably the only person left in North America that doesn't drink coffee. But, but there are not one but two redeeming factors to this. One, I love the smell of coffee. Does that count? And if that doesn't, well, how about this? I adore coffee ice cream. So. Am I in? Don't answer that question. So without further ado or delay, here are the top 10 facts you didn't know about coffee. Starting in descending order in no particular order is number 10. Coffee was originally chewed. Yeah. Sipping may be your preferred method of Java consumption, but coffee has not always been the wonderful liquid libation that it is today. According to a number of historians, the first African tribes to consume coffee did so by grinding the berries together, adding in some animal fat, and rolling these caffeinated treats into tiny edible energy balls. That's right, tiny edible energy balls. Hmm. Why don't we move on to number nine? Don't you think? <laughs> number nine, drinking decaf coffee fuels the soda industry. Believe it or not, that's true. And here's why. After coffee beans are decaffeinated, several coffee manufacturers sell the caffeine to soda and pharmaceutical companies. So how about that? I guess there's a use for everything. Here's number eight. The average American spends about $1,100 on coffee each year. Actually, I would have thought it was higher, but you'd think that spending an average of $1,100 on coffee each year would be enough to make America the world's most caffeinated nation. You are wrong. Which brings us, we're gonna slide right into number seven. Finland happens to be the world's coffee capital. Though Finland does not produce any beans of its own, its citizens drink a lot of coffee, the most of any coffee in the world. I would have never have thought, but there you go. There must be a Starbucks every three feet on the streets in the wonderful country of Finland. Here's number six of personal interest to me because I love classical music. I was brought up that way. It was in my family professionally. But number six states that Beethoven would have been a barista's worst nightmare. Beethoven loved 
coffee and was extremely particular about how his coffee was prepared. So much so that he insisted that each cup he would consume be made with exactly 60 beans and no less and certainly no more. I can imagine the coffee houses of his time in places like Vienna would actually run and hide when they saw him coming down the street, but he would have never noticed them because he would have been so busy thinking about what he was gonna put down on sheet note paper concerning his next brilliant classical music work. Here's number five for your coffee trivia consideration. There have been several attempts to ban coffee entirely. As recently as the 18th century, the story goes, governments were trying to eradicate coffee. Can you imagine a government trying to do that? Who do they think they are? Among the many reasons for outlawing the beverage were its tendency to stimulate something called radical thinking. Hmm, maybe that's why so many people drink coffee today. In 1746, Sweden actually took things to an extreme when it banned both coffee and coffee paraphernalia. Well, banning coffee is bad enough, but coffee paraphernalia, what do we mean by coffee para paraphernalia, if you can even pronounce the word, and please, please don't ever ask me to spell it. Well, this was the paraphernalia that was banned. Cups, saucers, I'm guessing even spoons, anything that had to do with coffee. This is a sin. Hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine how I would be if I actually drank coffee? That's why I don't drink. That, that's why I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink liquor. You would probably have to peel me off the ceiling. And sometimes you do anyway. Let's go to number four, don't you think? Number four goes like this. 17th century women thought coffee was turning their men into useless corpses. <laughs> oh, there's a lot I could say about that, but let's move on to the explanation, don't you think? In 1674, the women's petition against coffee claimed the beverage was turning British men into useless corpses, and to that end, proposed a ban on coffee for anyone under the age of 60. You know what, even to this day, if people would just let other people live and stop assuming what would be best for them and concentrate on what is best for themselves, wow, what a different world it would be. So much said for my little editorial piece for today at absolutely no extra charge to you. Which brings us to number three, yes, I'm sorry, this is slowly coming to an end. Number three goes like this. The world's most expensive coffee comes from, are you ready for this? Animal poop. Yes, animal poop. Well, it kind of goes like this. Kopi Luwak, K-O-P-I, next word, L-U-W-A-K, is the world's most expensive coffee and earns its pricey distinction thanks to a surprising step in its production. That step is digestion. In Indonesia, a wild animal known as the Asian palm civet, C-I-V-E-T, which is a small critter similar to the weasel, that Asian palm civet cannot resist the bright red coffee cherries that abound there, even though they can't digest the actual coffee beans. The beans pass through the civet's systems without being fully digested. Oh boy, how about this next part? At which point, 
some brave coffee farmers collect the beans from the civet's droppings. Um, I'm not even going to picture that, actually. And hopefully they wash through them. And then the final step, they sell them for up to $600 a pound. No, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, I think I know why I don't drink coffee now. Which brings us to number two. It is second in the world. Second in the world to what? Coffee is consumed in such great quantities. It is the world's second largest traded commodity, surpassed only by, what do you think? Coffee beans with red in them in Indonesia. No, just joking. Surpassed only by crude oil. It is uh, one's in the world, the world's most beloved beverage after water. Uh, not crude oil, but coffee. It is worth well over $100 billion worth worldwide. That's how humongous the coffee business and trade happens to be. And now folks, we're gonna slide into home plate with this final coffee trivia. It's number one, here we go. Coffee was discovered by a goat herder and not in Indonesia. It is said that coffee was discovered by a goat herder in Ethiopia in the 1500s. He saw his goats one day eating coffee cherries. Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> Afterwards, he observed a change in their behavior. They gained a high amount of energy and also those goats didn't happen to sleep at night. The herder shared his findings with local monks there. After they made their own drink from coffee beans, they realized that they too could stay up all night and since they were monks, pray. Word spread to other Ethiopian monks and soon after reached all across the civilized world, even Indonesia. <laughs> hey, listen. I'm not picking on Indonesia. I used to be a cruise director, as many of you know, and I had the pleasure of visiting the Indonesian islands for many years. It's a great country, great people. I just won't drink the coffee there. I'm sorry, I don't care what you say. Anyway, I hope you had a great time. I think you can tell that, well, I kind of did as well, just a little bit, but now, I don't know about you, I'm going to go running to my refrigerator, open the freezer part, and consume coffee ice cream. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. This has been fun. We are going to wait here until you decide to tune into future episodes of Top 10 or past episodes of Top 10 and all the other shows here just for you on Live Life Well TV. And this has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. Thank you so much for tuning in.